Now let's move on to the supposition of the assumption strategy. Okay, everyone ready? Okay, so sit back and relax. Huh? So we are going to, uh, I'm going to show you uh, this strategy. I'm going to show you this strategy using actual uh, past PSLE question. Huh? Okay, I've shared this before in the past, but I'm going to share with you again uh, today. All right, this uh, strategy called assumption or the supposition strategy. Yeah? Now, what is assumption or supposition strategy? It's a very powerful yet very easy to use strategy commonly found in the more challenging paper two of the mass exam. Now, I will illustrate this example using an actual past PSLE question. Okay, so you may have seen this question before. Uh, this is in PSLE 2013, paper two, uh, paper two in question 15. Question 15 means that, uh, okay, you know, question 18, usually 15, 16, 17, 16, 17, 18 is uh, the tougher question. So this one probably is about four mark question. Okay. Now, Meng sold a total of 368 large and small durians at the price shown below. So they give you a diagram. Large durian $9, small durian $5. And he collected $2,760. Some of you will be wondering, huh, how many large durian and how many small durians did he actually sell? Uh, so it's not given here, right? What is given here is just the total. The total of 368 large and small durians. And what is given to you is that the the price of one large durian and the price of one small durian and he collected 2760 so question asks how many large durians did Ming sell now the challenging part about this question is that number one we are dealing with two different variables number one is the number of durians okay the number of large durian and number of small durians secondly we are dealing with the prices of each durian so the number and the price, they are different. Huh? So do not be confused. So, so you must be very clear. Okay, are, are you talking about the, the number of the durians or are you talking about the price of each durian? Okay, let's move on. Huh? Now most students, if you do not know the supposition or the assumption method, you will tend to use the guess and check method. Okay, now there's nothing wrong with the guess and check method. Let's see how it is done. Huh? Okay, let's uh, guess and check. Uh. Guess and check, let's say there are 368. I guess that there are 200 large and 168 small. Okay, so this part here must tally. Uh. 200 plus 168 must be 368. Okay, if not, you'll be totally out. Uh. So if I guess that there are large, 200 large, so I must multiply 200 times $9. Okay, since one large durian is $9, so I get 1,800. So if I guess that there are 168 small durians, 168 multiplied by $5, I get $840. So I add up both 1,800 and 840, I get $2,640. Now, did I meet the requirements of 2760? No, right? So what I must do? I must continue to do my guess and check. Uh -huh. Okay, let's move on. Let's say I increase to 210 large. And then decrease uh, the small durance by 158. I calculate, I get 2680. Again, it doesn't meet my requirement. Okay, I move on again and again and again. And you can see that I must guess here five times before I finally get the correct answer, which is 230 large durance and 138 small durance. Then finally, I get the the overall amount which is collected, which meets the requirement of the question. Okay, so I have seen quite a number of students who use guess and check, and they, you know, they do like they listed maybe uh, 15 times the entire paper, and then in the end they still get the wrong answer. Okay, uh, so so guess and check is the last resort. It's, I'm not saying that you cannot use guess and check. You can, if you have no other strategies, if you have no clue how to proceed on. And you have the time, please use. But if you, you know, if you have other alternative methods, which is faster, more efficient, okay, you have to use other methods. Okay. So that's why I'm going to share you today assumption of 
the supposition method, uh, which is quite easy to use. Let's take a look. Uh. Okay. Now, first, I'm going to assume that all the Duran soul are small. Okay, that's why it's called the assumption method. Okay, I'm going to assume all Duran soul are small. So if I assume all Duran soul are small, all 368 Durans cost five dollars each. So eight multiply by five dollars, I get one thousand eight hundred and forty. Now, is that what a main collector? Obviously no, right? Why it is not what main collector? Because very simple, not all the Duran soul are small. Some Duran soul must be large. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to find the difference between the find the difference between the actual amount collected, okay, and the one where I assume that all Durans are small. So 2760 minus 1840, I get 920 dollars. So this 920 dollars is the difference between the actual amount collected and the the amount where if I assume that all the rents are small. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find the difference in the unit price between the large and the small durian. Okay, the difference between the unit price of the large and the small durian, $9, the large durian, small durian is $5. What's the difference? $4, right? The difference is $4. So what do I do? I simply divide the difference here. I divide $920, Divide by four dollars, I get two hundred and thirty, and this two hundred thirty is the number of large durians. Okay, very simple. Now, some of you may be asking, teacher, what if I assume that all durians are large? Can you do that? Yes, definitely. Right, and you will derive the same answer. Okay, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Let's assume that all durians are large. Now, if all durians are large, since large durian costs nine dollars. So 368 multiplied by nine dollars, I get three thousand three hundred and twelve. Right now, this is not the amount collected. So what I do, I do is that I find the difference between the assumption where all durians are large and the actual amount collected. The difference is five hundred and fifty-two. So what is this different cost? Uh, because remember, not all durians sold are large. Some durians sold are small. Okay, so this is cost by the, the amount of or the number of small durians which we ignore. So again, I find the unit price, $9 minus $5, I get $4. And then I divide 552, divide by $4, I get 138. Now this 138 is the number of small durians, not large durians. Huh? So I need to do one more step, which is subtract minus the total 368, Minus the number of small durians, which is 138, I get 230. Right? Because in the question, they asked me how many large durians did Ming sell. Okay, so you must look at the question very carefully and assume, okay, and do the right assumption. And finally, make sure your steps answer the, the question itself. Okay? Quite easy to understand, huh? Very simple, right? Okay, any question? Any question? Understand really very good. Why must use the different price? Okay, Taufik, why different price? Because uh, it is given in, the, in this question that uh, the large durian cost $9 and the small durian cost $5. So we need to find the difference between the, the price of the two durian. Okay, in this question. Why? Because we need to divide with the, the difference, okay, which is caused by the our assumption just now. Does assumption usually come out in the exam? I've seen quite a few. And this question itself is from the PSLE. So, you know, if uh, PSLE, okay, uh, you know, if uh, there are past PSLE questions uh, that require the use of assumption of assumption strategy, so uh, I believe you have to take a little bit more seriousness in uh, remembering or understanding this strategy. Okay. All right. How many mark this question? Uh, I think it is a four mark question. 
Okay, because this is uh, in question 15 of paper 2. Okay, quite easy to score, right? If you are familiar with this strategy, I think you can do this in like 2 minutes. Right? Very, very easy. Okay, Talha asks, what if we do assumption and guess and check, but they are different? Which one to take? Huh? Okay, so then you have to double check both methods. Huh? Doesn't mean that if you do assumption and you do guess and check, surely your assumption is correct. Okay, uh, so you have to check both methods and see which is the, whether you have made any careless mistake. Okay. Alright, let's move on to the last strategy.